for all of the wild success that the Golden State Warriors had from 2014 to 2019. Championships won, paradigms shifted, crotches punted. The last year has been on the bumpier side. Multiple key pieces from their championship core either bolted for new opportunities or for retirement. Draymond Green, however, one of the more colorfully frank and cerebral players that the NBA has ever seen, is still doing his thing and doing it well in the Bay Area. Green has always been something of a controversial character. People either seem to deeply appreciate him, he's the best defensive player in the world, or dismiss him entirely. Draymond's subtle offerings subvert a lot of the basketball world's traditional ideas about what makes a player good. What do you do? Do you know how to do what he does? I don't. And yet, Draymond Green is a proven accessory to winning basketball at the highest level, and the impact of his return has been drastic for this Warriors team. So how are both of those things true at the same time? Let's take a closer look. Defense has long been Draymond Green's calling card, but it might not be immediately apparent how he pulls that off. Draymond doesn't have the athletic superpowers that players like Anthony Davis, Kawhi, or Giannis have, but he does have some physical tools. He's six foot six, he has a ton of core strength, and he has a wingspan that measures at about seven foot one and a quarter inches. Draymond's presence brings stability to Golden State's attack. I've always loved how high-motored Green is, at times crossing over into obnoxiousness, but he's also incredibly efficient with his effort, and that fact is largely due to his greatest skill. Draymond's defensive brilliance is in his awareness and in his timing. In fact, when it comes to those two traits combined, Draymond is in the very top echelon of players ever to play. In his prime, very few have done it better. He's a smart, switchable player, but that IQ is best utilized anchoring, with the action unfolding in front of him. A key aspect of this is that he's able to lurk near a play, monitoring it without overcommitting so that the ball handler has more options. Watch him eyeball this play developing without giving Derrick Rose any clear indication that he's going to leave Chris Stapps Porzingis. Draymond's moving to be there when Lance Thomas spins to try and score. He does it again here, recently against the Raptors, forcing OG to miss the easy one because of his timing, position, and long ass arms. If Draymond overplays this, it would likely catch Fred VanVleet's attention. But again, he waits until the exact moment that Fred has committed to passing it and OG has made eye contact to catch the ball. Timing is the key. Another underrated aspect of great positional defenders is that they have a way of setting up teammates to come and make a more aggressive play on the ball. The offensive player is confronted and redirected and thus vulnerable to swipes, deflections, or out-of-area shot blockers. Draymond sets these plays up all the time, and that strengthens the whole of the defense. This play is a great example. Green stays above the lane to avoid the three-second violation, but you can see him quickly survey the personnel involved here and deduce that Harrison Barnes is coming over to be the screener for De'Aaron Fox. Again, he waits until Fox is committed to pass this ball to the roller and meets Barnes high enough so that he has to alter his straight line momentum, angling him towards the baseline, which acts as an extra defender. This gives James Wiseman enough time to really go up and get this. And when it comes to timing, we'd also be remiss to skip over the grifting, and Draymond is one of the great defensive grifters of all time. I sometimes think that in another life, Draymond could have been a stuntman. He could take a charge on a statue. He flops more than Quibi. On offense, Draymond Green's contributions are understated, but hugely important to what Golden State wants to do. I understand it's hard for some folks to grapple with the idea of a great player who doesn't score, much less score efficiently. But if it isn't a wide open three or a cut to the rim, odds are it's not going up. But inefficient offense only really creates a huge problem when it's paired with poor awareness of identity. Draymond knows exactly who he is, thus he doesn't create a lot of damning waste for Golden State in the form of ill-advised shots. Now, there are tons of ways to combat talented scorers. You can bring help, you can bring doubles, you can bring timely stunts, you can keep them off their spots, on and on and on and on. But because Draymond's impact is so independent of creating with the ball in his hands, it's difficult to game plan to stop what he brings to the table. Historically, when you take a look at the players who are immensely impactful defensively, don't shoot the ball particularly well, and yet still carry high assist percentages, you're often talking about players like Jason Kidd, Rajon Rondo, 
Mo Cheeks. Mostly slashing floor general types who stirred the drink for their ISO and post-happy offenses before the dawn of the three-point revolution. Draymond sits as an odd example among those players, but that's made possible and driven largely by how he fits in Golden State's unique philosophy. The Warriors have led the league in off-screen offensive possessions every single season since Steve Kerr took over in 2014-15. Not a tough decision to embrace off-ball movement and mobile three-point shooting when you have Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, in my opinion, the two best all-around shooters ever. Draymond's motor and IQ as a screener put him in the position to be more of a conduit for opportunistic playmaking than someone who pounds the ball and looks for their own offense as a way of moving the defense. The passes and the reads don't seem overly complex, but he is terrific at making them. Low angle, leading bounce passes to cutters, quick lobs to the big, swings to relocating shooters, the ball does not stick in his hands. It's a big reason why he's perennially near the top of the league in assist to usage. This makes him a seamless fit with the relentless off-ball savvy of Stephen Curry, who is easily the most impactful and significant off-ball superstar that we have ever had. Watch Curry's mere presence in this off-ball sequence allow Draymond Green to throw Andrew Wiggins an easy lob. Of course, there are some folks who are quick to point out that Dre has fallen off a little bit, and I think that that's fair, but I think some skills age better than others, and for that reason, I think he's far from washed. From 2014-15 to 2018-19, Draymond played in and started 372 of a possible 410 regular season games. He also played in 104 playoff games, which are notoriously more rigorous. That is a whopping 476 games in five seasons, not to mention these were seasons in which the entire league was gunning for the Warriors every single night. That is a circus that takes a toll. And still, even after four years of college and then all of that, Draymond is still 30 years old and the Warriors are scrappy. What that will amount to in the loaded Western Conference is another thing entirely, but there's still a headache to deal with even without Klay Thompson in the lineup. It is common practice to downplay Draymond's place alongside guys like Curry and Thompson, as I think many people assume that Green's confidence puts himself exactly on their level. My guess is that he's not hoping that you remember him as a star or as somebody who scored just as many points as them shooting fellers. He's just hoping that you'll see the game in the nuanced way that he does. Self-awareness is colossally important for players who want to add value in the NBA, and Green is proof of that. He understood this very early in his career. Everybody in this league isn't going to be a scorer, everybody isn't going to be a rebounder, everybody is not going to be a guy who gets assists. You have to find your niche and do, do what that is to help the team. If you're doing what you do well and you're helping the team, it'll eventually help you. The whole idea of being in the right place at the right time is contingent on a person's ability to realize where they are and possessing the ability to seize that opportunity. Otherwise, it's just a pathway to success that just passes you like a ship in the night. Even if you think Draymond's legacy is propped up by playing next to great players, you've got to give him credit for having the eagerness and the intelligence to not only accept his role, but to sharpen it in a way that cultivates winning. And my theory is that Draymond's life as a hooper to that point had sharpened all of the tangible skills necessary to seize this opportunity. The bottom line is this. Basketball, at its best, is about harmony. And harmony is one of those phenomenons in life that makes you feel like you're experiencing real truth in the universe. Multiple elements operating with a singular goal. So how cruel, how backwards, how bizarre is it that we would look at somebody like Draymond Green and say, he is not special? Doesn't that betray the very heart of this game that we claim to love so much? In some ways, I think you could say that for Draymond Green's style of play, his personality, his value set as a player, Ending up with Golden State during the time that he did was immensely good fortune. You could even call it destiny. By that same token, based on what we've seen, it seems just as equally destined that he'll be forever underappreciated and ultimately misunderstood. Let me know if you agree.